Hi friends, let's discuss today the characteristics of instrument and measurement systems. So these play a very important role in the design, selection and application of any instrument system. This video focuses mainly on the static characteristics where we clearly define and explain different static characteristics of the instrumentation in detail. So if you see the characteristics of measurement systems, so the system characteristics are to be known basically to choose an instrument that most suited to a particular measurement. The performance characteristics, we normally be divided into static and dynamic because static characteristics are basically the criteria for the measurement of quantities that remain constant over a period of time that is independent of time. So all the characteristic categorized under static characteristics do not vary with time. And whereas the dynamic characteristics always vary with the time because the dynamic characteristics always depend on the control systems where the input signal is continuously varying and how the instrument output responds over a period of time uh, with the change in the input, all the characteristics depending on that basically classified under dynamic characteristics. So in this video, we'll see basically the static characteristics, dynamic characteristics we'll be seeing in another video. So the static characteristics can broadly be classified as desirable and undesirable. So desirable characteristics are basically accuracy, precision, sensitivity, reproducibility, static error, and resolution, okay? Accuracy and static error go hand in hand because we normally apply the static error in terms of the accuracy and then accuracy in terms of the static error. Whereas and there are undesirable characteristics also like drift, dynamic error, dead zone and hysteresis. So this dynamic error, we'll see it in dynamic characteristics. So other parameters, uh, linearity also, we will see it in this. So the scale range is very important. Uh, when an instrument is defined normally as the difference between the largest and the smallest reading of the instrument. Now, if the uh, highest point of calibration is X maximum, while the lowest is X minimum, the range is basically the, all G, the instrument range is always given that X minimum to X maximum or X mag minimum to X maximum. So many times if the instrument X minimum lowest value is zero, the instrument range is expressed as its maximum value. There is another point uh, parameter which is called as pan, which is ac actually the algebraic difference between the highest and the lowest point of calibration. Span is always the X minus X maximum minus X minimum. So that's basically, for example, for a thermometer calibrated between 100 degrees centigrade to 400 degrees centigrade, the range could be 100 degrees centigrade to 400 degrees centigrade, but the span is 400 minus 100, that's 300 degrees centigrade. So if the same thermometer, if there is a range of minus 100 degrees centigrade to 400 degrees centigrade, in that case, the span is 400 minus of minus 100 degrees centigrade. So 400 plus 100 degrees centigrade, it will be 500 degrees centigrade. So that's the difference that you need to know whenever you are understanding the span of the instrument. Then the static error plays a very important role. The difference between the true value of the measuring quantity to the value shown by the measuring instrument under not varying process conditions. So if the process varying conditions are same, static error is the difference between the measured value minus the true value. So accuracy is defined actually the degree of closeness with which the instrument reading approaches the true value of the quantity being measured. So the measured quantity may be different from the true value due to the effects of temperature, humidity, et cetera. So actually accuracy is expressed in terms of percentage of full scale deflection or percentage of true value. So it all depends on the, if the, if the instruments per, Accuracy is expressed as a percentage of full scale deflection. It is always advisable to use the instrument at the highest range of the instrument. Whereas if the accuracy is expressed as a percentage of true value, it can always be measured or applied or used anywhere in the range of the instrument. That's where the accuracy, whenever it is expressed as percentage of full scale deflection, it is always advisable to use it at the highest range. Then the another parameter is the precision which is the degree of closeness or exactness for which the instrument is designed. It is composed of two characteristics, conformity and significant figures. So precision always, uh, 
says that how to what extent a person repeating the measurements over and over a period of time gives the same set of values within close proximity so the significant figures conformity to a particular value which is which are around this value this is as close to the true value as can be read by the scale although there are no deviations from the observed value the created error the error created by the limitation of the error is called the precision error okay so there is a, a difference between you know accuracy and precision the instrument could be accurate but need not be precise right uh, accuracy is closeness to the true value whereas the precision is always how far you are repeating the values so all the repeated or reproducible values are how far they are conforming too near to the true value closeness to the true value all the readings so that's where the instrument could be precise precise means all the values are scattered very close to the true value but not accuracy accuracy is closeness to the true value that's the basic difference between precision and accuracy then there are other two words which are confusing in static parameters repeatability and reproducibility repeatability is the degree of closeness with which the given value may be repeatedly measured when the measurement is made on the same instrument at the same location by the same observer and under the same conditions so this is a very very important uh, uh, factor whereas reproducibility again it is the closeness of the output readings for the same input right when the measurement is made irrespective of by a different observer by a different measuring location and under different conditions and the use and time of measurement may be different that's the basic difference between repeatability and reproducibility so repeatability is the by the same instrument at the same location by the same observer and under the same conditions whereas if the instrument scattered values are obtained under different measurement conditions different observer different instrument location and different conditions and different use and time of the measurement so that uh, is the basic uh, difference between repeatability and reproducibility perfect rep reproducibility means that the instrument has no drift drift, drift means that with a given input the measured values vary with time okay so we will see it uh, what exactly is the uh, drift so reproducibility and repeatability are a measure of closeness with which a given input may be measured over and over again the two terms cause confusion therefore the distinction is made between these two terms reproducibility is specified in terms of scale readings over a given period of time on the other hand repeatability is defined as the variation of scale reading and is random in nature that's the basic difference then static sensitivity is another important factor uh, which can be derived as for the smallest changes in the measured variable for which the instrument responds so it can be defined as the ratio of change in output to the change in input which causes it in steady state conditions so if you go on plotting different output values for the given uh, input as we know for any graph the cause is always given on x axis and the effect response is always given on output so for each cause uh, what is the response what is the effect so like that if you go on and if you join all the points covering a straight line or if you can fit a straight line to that um, so the difference delta q not by qi that is delta difference of output delta output change in output by change in output gives you the static sensitivity so this usage of the term generally limited to linear dev devices where the plot of the output to input magnitude is always straight so it may be noted that a sensitive instrument can quickly detect a small change in measurement measuring instruments that have smaller scale parts are more sensitive uh, that is very very important sensitive instruments need not necessarily be accurate that's what we have to so it is only producing the change in output for very small change in input but still it may not be equal to the true value and accuracy will always related to the true value that's what the sentence means that sensitive instruments need not necessarily be accurate then the resolution if you can understand another way it is the smallest change being measured which can be detected with certainty by an amount 
by an instrument. So resolution is defined as the smallest change in input increment, which can be detected with certainty by the instrument as an output. If a non, this, is, this resolution mostly refers to the non-zero input. So if a non-zero input quantity is slowly increased, the output reading won't increase until some minimum change in the input takes place. The minimum change which causes the change in input is termed as the resolution. Let's say the instrument resolution has two volts and the instrument range is from zero to 500 volts. So if you are given 200 volts, the instrument reads 200 volts. But if we try to change the in input increment by one volt, so if you, if you try to read two not, 201 volts, the instrument will not respond because its resolution, the smallest change in input increment which it can detect is only just two volts because its resolution is two volts. So only when you give again 202 volts, the instrument output detects by 202 volts. That is exactly what we mean by resolution, right? So uh, you cannot try to read the change in input which is lesser than the resolution of the instrument. That's what we need to clearly understand. Then we have a dead zone for the largest range of values of a measured variable to which the instrument does not respond. Okay, so this is exactly on the x-axis if you see. So if you see, this is a measured variable and this is the instrument uh, uh, reading. This is a true value and this is the instrument reading. This is how the instrument is responding. Okay, although you're giving an input signal like this, but it is responding with a, after some time lag. Okay, so the difference on the x-axis uh, is the dead zone and the difference on the y-axis is the dead zone. And the different on the x-axis, we normally call it as a, this is a dead time uh, between this uh, value and this value. Okay, so a practical example is due to static friction, a control valve does not open even for a large opening signals from the controller because it has certain dead zone where it can respond when the input value is given. Then hysteresis is a phenomenon that measures the different output effects when loading and unloading. So if you, if you go on giving input values and then plot output, you know, when you increase the uh, values, say let's you have an output and input. So at 50% scale, this is the output. At 75% scale, this is the output. At 100% full scale, this is the output. Same thing if you go on reducing the uh, input values and go on measuring. Let's say you are giving adding uh, 50 kgs, uh, 10 kgs, 20 kg, 30 kg, 40 kg, 50 kgs here. And then go on reducing it, 40 kgs, 30 kgs, 20, 20 kgs, 10 kgs, zero kgs. And the area of the curve is normally termed as the hysteresis. So many times for the increasing values of input and instrument, it may indicate one set of output values. For the decreasing value of the input, the same instrument may indicate its different set of output values. When output values are plotted against the input, the following kind of graph. From the above figure, it can be seen that for increasing inputs or decreasing inputs, the maximum variation is seen at the 50% of the full scale. So the hysteresis is at the 50% of the full scale. That's what we normally take. So the linearity is normalized uh, when the input output points of the instrument are plotted on the calibration curve and resulting curve may not be linear. So this would be only if the output is proportional to input. Linearity thus, linearity is the measure of maximum deviation of these points from the straight line. That's exactly what. So linearity is expressed independent of linearity, zero-based linearity and terminal-based linearity, if you can see it here. So this, these are all the points where we are doing, and this is the idealized fitting curve, curve fitting. So if you see the response of the percentage span, so the maximum error is at this point, okay? So the delta Y, delta percentage of span response we are getting, and that is basically the linearity error, okay? It is actually the non-linearity, but most of the cases it is expressed as plus or minus 1% of linearity, a plus or minus 2% of linearity. It is actually the plus or minus 2% of non-linearity because the instrument is linear 98% range, but only for 2% it is non-linear. That's the small confusion part here. So uh, if you plot the curve like this, this is how for the stimulus, 
for the cause and for the response for the effect. If you uh, percentage span cause and percentage span effect, if you plot the graph, this is how you can understand the linearity in the input output relation. So drift is another uh, thing which is understood and desired change uh, in the input in the output of the measured variable over a period of time that is unrelated to the changes in, in or output. Okay, or operating conditions or load. It may be caused by environmental factors, mechanical vibrations, changes in temperatures, stray electric fields, stray magnetic fields, thermal EMFs, etc. Okay, so in temperature measurement, drift occurs due to scale formation on thermal well, wherever the mercury uh, thing is there, and uh, there the scale formed, then it, the instrument responds a bit slow, uh, a bit shift. There is a shift in the output response. That's what we normally call it as the shift. So drift occurs in thermocouple or RTD elements due to change of mechanical metallic properties because of the change in temperature conditions. So the uh, following factors contribute to the drift, wear and tear, mechanical vibrations, stresses developed in the parts of the instrument, temperature variations, stray electric and magnetic fields, and thermal EMF. So drift can occur in the flow meters due to wear of the nozzle, wear and tear of the nozzle or venturing. It may occur in the resistance thermometer due to metal contamination, etc. So there is always a zero drift and span drift and zonal drift. Okay, so if you see with an example for a bathroom weighing scale, uh, it is quite casual to find that there is a reading perhaps one kg with no one standing on the scale. If someone known weight of 70 kgs were to get on the scale, the reading would be 71 kgs. If someone with a known weight 100, it would be 101 kgs. So the zero shift is normally removable by calibration by getting adjusting it back to that um, zero conditions to zero kgs. You can always read that. That's what we normally call it as zero drift or span shift. Let's understand this. So if there is a this is an output input characteristics for zero drift. So when this is the uh, input, the output is starts from here. Okay, and this is basically the zero drift. Then if the span drift means over a period of the span, the entire span of the instrument, there is a change in shift in characteristic. This is a characteristic with span drift. This is the normal characteristic. So this is normally called it as the span, span drift, span shift in the sensitivity. And zonal drift means at a particular zone, there is a shift, there is a shift in the sensitivity of the instrument. And that we normally call it as drift at certain zone or zonal drift. Then you have a dead band and a dead time. Uh, if you see it with the uh, graph, and this is a dead space. Okay, so if you go on increasing and decreasing from minus value to plus value of the output reading, there is always a some seconds uh, in the on the x-axis or on the measured values, both on the negative side on the positive side. Uh, which it will not respond. And that is exactly is the dead time or dead space. Okay. Uh, mainly it is purposefully used of, in voltage regulators and other controllers to prevent oscillation or repeated activation or deactivation second. Okay. Dead time is the time required by the measuring instrument to begin to respond to a change in the measured variable. So in the, this measured variable, only here it starts to respond. And on the negative, negative side, only here it spans. So this is what is basically called as the dead band. So if you try to understand the static characteristics, the thing, let's see a small example. The thermometer is calibrated for a range of 100 degrees centigrade to 150 degrees centigrade. The accuracy is specified as plus or minus 0.25%. So the static error we normally get if we, the Accuracy is not given either in terms of FSD, full scale deflection, or in terms of true value. The maximum static error has to be calculated over the span of the thermometer. So the span of the thermometer is 150 minus 150 degrees centigrade. So the maximum error is uh, plus or minus 0.25 into 50 by 100. That is plus or minus 0.125 degrees centigrade. So this is applicable for the entire span of the instrument. This is the maximum static error. So if you see the analog indicating instrument with a scale range of 0 to 2.5 volts shows a voltage of 1.46 volts. And it has a true value of 1.5 volts. And we need to find out what are the values of absolute error and correction. 
and then express the, as a fraction of the true value and the full scale deflection. That's uh, actually what we, so the absolute error is always in terms of the units that we need to remember. Whereas a static error, it can be as a percentage of full scale deflection or a percentage of true value or a percentage of span. But when you say absolute error, it is always with the units. So absolute error is measured value minus true value. So 1.46 minus 1.5 volts. This is minus 0 0.04 volts, right? So the correction for this is plus 0 0.04 volts. So the relative here is minus 0 0.04 volts by 1.5 volts into 100. That is minus 2.66% because the relative error in terms of the true value, because the true value is here, 1.5 volts. If you take it in a full scale deflection, same error can be expressed as minus 0 0.04 by 2.5 because the range full scale deflection into 100, that is minus 1.60 percentage of full scale deflection. That's how we normally, this is at the design stage what we do. And the previous one was while using the instrument, how to account for the static error. Then we have a pressure indicator showing a reading of 22 bar on the scale range of 0 to 25 bar. If the true value is 21.4, what is the static error? The static error is the reading is 22, right? And the true value is 21.4. So the static error is measured value minus true value it is plus 0.6 bar. So the static correction is minus of the static error. So minus of plus 0 0.6, so it is 0 0.6 bar is the correction. So the relative error with respect to the true value is 0.6 by 21.4, it is 2.8% of true value. So you can also calculate the error as 0.6 by 25 bar for the uh, full scale deflection. If you have to express the error as a percentage of full scale deflection. Now you know about the static error, sensitivity, uh, the accuracy, how the express accuracy is expressed in terms of true value or a full scale deflection. Yeah, this, this is another instrument where you are designing an instrument, a pressure gauge, which has a linear calibration curve, has a radius, 120 mm radius line, and the pressure is zero to 50 Pascal is displayed or an arc of 300. So there is an arc of 300 degrees, 300 degrees, and there is a, a radius of scale line at 120 mm. You have to be, determine the sensitivity of the gauge as a ratio of scale length to pressure. So you have to basically calculate the 300 degrees, you have to convert it into radians, which when we multiply it by pi by 180, we get five pi by three. So the full scale deflection is five pi by three radians. So we have to, if we find out the length of the scale, the total length of the scale, we only 300 degrees we have, but what is the length of the scale is five pi by three into 120 mm, that 120 mm is the radius of the scale line. Okay, so we get 200 pi into 200, uh, into uh, pi is 22 by 7 mm. So the sensitivity is 200 pi by 50 because maximum range. So four pi mm per Pascal is the sensitivity. So mm is the deflection, Pascal is the input pressure. So static sensitivity is always four pi mm per Pascal. That's how we normally express. Then we have another very small example of a Wheatstone bridge which requires a change of seven ohms is the unknown ohm bridge to produce a change in deflection of three mm of the galvanometer. Determine the sensitivity and the deflection factor. So the sensitivity here is maximum change in output by maximum change in input. This is the uh, uh, small change, okay? So uh, this is a wrong here, it, it has to be input. So three mm by seven mm. So you get 0.429 millimeters per ohm. So for every ohm range uh, change in resistance, the deflection is 0.429 mm. So the deflection factor is the inverse of the sensitivity. So one by 0.429, the one by 0.429 ohms per mm. So the deflection factor is for every mm of deflection, it requires a change of one by 0.429 ohms of resistance in the galvanometer. That's what we understand from this sensitivity and deflection factor for a galvanometer. So that's all for the static characteristics. Um, thank you for your uh, time. 
and want to watch more related video please